Hey gang, welcome back to the Southern Philippines. Today I thought I would talk about some culture shocks that I experienced when I first came to the Philippines many, many, many years ago and was traveling on a trip with my family. And just what I did that was that shocked me or at least that I found unusual or was challenging because I was very ignorant about a lot of things back then. And so this trip is going to be when I went to Lake Cebu and the Seven Falls, which is really one of the most amazing places that I've ever seen in the Philippines. If you ever get a chance to go to the Seven Falls, I highly recommend it. But I'm going to tell you about the trip and the culture shocks and the experiences that I had on that trip. And hopefully I'll throw some footage in. I wasn't doing videography back then, but I've got some photographs. And if I have to stop this video occasionally, it's because cars are going to be driving by into this area or somebody comes through and blares a little commercial music so i may have to do just an overlay real quick if you see some unusual music that's oddly placed okay so let's get into the trip i was going on this trip and we were doing kind of a convoy with cars going up to from we were in dio city Actually, I think we left from Davao then. Yeah, we left from Davao. We were going all the way through Digos, through General Santos, up into the mountains to where Lake Cebu and the Seven Falls were. And I got my really first taste of some different cultural differences on that trip. And one of them was I was sitting in the second, yeah, the second row of an SUV. And some of my wife's cousins that were, uh, they were really about college age, maybe a little bit older than college age were in behind us some females and i was speaking english with my wife i was speaking english with the other people that were up front and it was funny because they started talking about nosebleeds and if you're not familiar with that term in the philippines it's even though english is taught in the schools and you know people really there's very much a, a, a english speaking culture here it's not their native tongue. It's not what they talk in every day. So in the region that I was in then and the region I'm in today, the language is Bisaya. Whereas if you go up to Metro Manila, that's gonna be Tagalog, uh, or I guess they call it Filipino is the official language. But that was Bisaya. So these people that I was with speak Bisaya every single day. That's what they speak to with their families. If they're watching television, you know, and they're communicating there, they're talking in Tagalog. So English is like the third choice language. And even though they're used to speaking English, they know English, they see it in television, it really, especially when they're around native English speakers, they start getting a headache because a lot of them, even though they speak English, they're having to translate everything from English back into Bisaya, from Bisaya into English before they speak. And over time, if you, if you do know a foreign language, but you're not fluent in it to the point that you can't translate, you recognize that it gives you a headache after a while. So I had never really thought about that, and I'd certainly never heard the term nosebleed. Uh, but as I later started learning some language here, I very much now understand that term because if, I, if I'm dealing with it for more than like two hours or so, I, I too start to get what I would call nosebleed effect and need to take a break. Now on the way up there, again, we were convoying, so we were taking several different SUVs to get there. Because there's about, I'd say 20, 25 of us that were going up for this family event. And one of the cars, it was my brother-in-law's car actually, got pulled over by the police in General Santos. And they apparently took his driver's license, told him to come up back later in the evening. They would take care of the ticket. Well, we didn't know anything about this, but later on in the evening, it did become an issue. So what happened was when we were coming back from Lake Cebu that night and from Seven Falls, I was in the same car with him coming back. I wasn't on the way up there. And we stopped at night and all of a sudden this guy pulls up on a motorcycle and he's got his like his wife who's like in a hijab or something that is on the back of the motorcycle. He goes up, my uh, brother-in-law gets out of the car and goes and starts talking to him. Everything's really kind of uh, strange. And what's happening is, is that this guy, rather than writing him a ticket, he's basically trying to get a bribe so that he'll give him back the driver's license. And he was wanting to charge some ridiculous amount of money. I don't remember how much it was. I think it was like maybe 5,000 pesos or something like that. 
in order to get the driver's license back. And so they're discussing it out there. And all of a sudden, another car pulls up behind us, which was my wife's cousin. Uh, and he, he goes up and starts uh, talking to the police officer. And he finds out what's going on and then realizes it's a shakedown. So he, like, knows every important government official, like, in the Philippines. So he gets on the phone with whoever's in charge of, like, police security for basically Mindanao. And uh, he's, like, personal friends with, you know, the top dog who's in law enforcement there and starts getting him on the phone at, like, 8, 9 o'clock at night. And all of a sudden, the police officer gets a little nervous, and next thing you know, everything's cleared up. But I learned an important lesson there about bribery and things outside the Davao region. You really wouldn't see that in the Davao region. It's, they don't cotton to that stuff. But apparently, this was like I say in General Santos, I saw it firsthand. So that was a culture shock for me there. By the way, if you enjoy this content, make sure you give it a like so it tells YouTube that other people be interested. It really helps the channel grow. And subscribe if you're not already, if you ever want to see this content again. Let's get back to the video. Now we were, once we got up to Lake Cebu, the first thing we did is we stopped for this place at, to eat lunch. And it was right on the lake. They have tilapia in that lake and they catch the fresh tilapia. They serve it up and cook it for you there at this resort. And when we go in, my wife's talking Basaya to the, the natives there that uh, she's ordering the food from and, and getting all the food. And she tells them, I find out later, that, hey, this, I think we were engaged at the time, so she's like, my fiance is a foreigner, so please cut off the fish heads because that will disturb him, which she didn't even talk to me about this. I'm not sure I would have been disturbed, but there's this thought amongst Filipinos that foreigners, especially Americans, would be very off-put by having the fish heads on the fish when they're eating it. Now, I grew up in the U.S. and we had trout and stuff like that, so that wouldn't have been an issue with me. I don't necessarily eat the heads, but certainly on the fish when it would be served to us or when we would cook it, especially when we were out camping. And God knows I grew up fishing and stuff and, and cleaned a few fish in my time, so I wouldn't have been squeamish. But what was funny about this is so they did. They cut the heads off, and when they, they brought the fish to the table, everything was all brought there, we were eating food, and then about, I'd say, 10 minutes into eating, they bring this huge plate out, and the fish heads that they cut off, they went ahead and they cooked them, because why wouldn't you? What a waste. And they placed this big platter of fish heads on the table. And immediately, the second it hits the table, like all of my uh, brother-in-laws and cousins, they just start grabbing them with their hands, these fish heads, and bringing them over to their plate. And my wife, I guess, again, she was my fiance at the time, she's staring at this and she's like speechless. And it's like she's horrified because I guess she was worried about me being judgy or something. And then her family's behavior as far as just grabbing everything with their hands and getting it. And she was like, oh my God, he's going to think I'm so uncivilized or that my family is. Because this was only like... And that was the thoughts going through her head. I did not think that. But this was probably only the, whew, maybe third time that I had met her family. Maybe fourth, probably the fourth time that I'd met her family. Certainly a lot of the extended cousins and stuff I hadn't. So that happened. And now we'll get into my ignorance. So again, we're up there at Lake Cebu and everybody's done eating. We're getting ready to go over to the Seven Falls. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I've got to use the restroom. And so I walk up to where the bathrooms are and um, a lady is in there with the door open uh, who turns out to be my future sister-in-law. She's got this bucket of water and she's like filling it up and throwing it on the, the, um, the floor of the bathroom the restroom and she's like she's she's rinsing it out because i guess she thought the floor was dirty and she smiles at me and she's like do you need to use the cr comfort room and i'm like yeah so she opens the door and leaves well while i'm in there i discover something that i hadn't seen before which is the toilets in the philippines when you get out in the rural areas they don't have tanks and they don't have seats on them it's just basically the bowl now i'm sure somewhere back in like you know 
my education, I learned about how to flush a toilet without a tank, but I drew a complete blank at this point. And I'm like, I'm looking there, there's a bucket, there's a spigot, there's a toilet. I had to use the bathroom and I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? And I don't know, I'm looking around trying to figure out how do you flush this thing? So finally, I just like, uh, I give up and leave. And I go tell my wife. And my wife, once we get in the car, she's telling me that she's fussed at her sister because she dumped the water bucket out. Oh, we'll let this car go by. All right, so she's fussing because she's like, she dumped the water out and didn't leave you with a filled up bucket. And I'm like, oh, what's the bucket for? Because there was a sink to wash my hands, so I'm trying to figure out why I need the bucket. And she's like, so you could pour it in there to flush the toilet. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't know that. If she left me a full bucket, the full bucket would still be there because I'm an ignorant American and didn't know how to do this. Now, guys, I want you to see this. There's like thousands of parking places everywhere, but this guy has to come right here and park right beside me. <laughs> It's, it's, I swear, you can put, there, there's a hundred parking places in here, but he passes by and comes back to park right here. I did another video about this, so funny, about this phenomenon in the Philippines. I'll put it up in a card here where you can see it if you want. But let's get back into the story. So at that point, my wife to be, ex I guess, educates this foreign ignorant. American on how the plumbing and stuff works in the Philippines when we're out in the rural areas, which I hadn't hadn't been used to that yet. So I know that now, and I didn't have any problems after that, but it was a little bit of a culture shock. That was my culture shock trip to Lake Cebu and the Seven Falls. Amazing place if you ever get a chance to go there. Really enjoyed it. I learned so much from that trip so many years ago. I wish I'd been doing video back then so that I could like, you know, shared some of that and shown you guys. Hopefully I was able to put some pictures in here and, and stuff of the falls and that trip because there was some amazing beauty up there. Really want to get back there again sometime soon. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video and thanks for watching.